All right. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on when and where you are watching this video. My name is Mike Richter, and I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about Semantic Kernel and what Microsoft partners need to know about it. So let me quickly introduce myself. I am a cloud solution architect in Microsoft's global partner solutions organization in the Americas. I am based in New York and it's been my privilege to work with Microsoft partners for the past nine years, helping them build modern and innovative applications on Azure. You can find my LinkedIn at this link and I encourage you to add me to your network and reach out to me with any questions that you have. All right, so why do you need to know about Semantic Kernel? Well, suppose you're going to build a generative AI app for your customers, um, or if you build your own apps, suppose you're going to add some new generative AI functionality to it. What are you gonna need? Well, first you're gonna need to connect to some AI services, right? You'll need this at a minimum, right? You're gonna need to generate text, um, support chat conversations with your customers and, us and users, uh, you may need to access embedding models so you can semantically search text and documents or in a database. You may also want to generate images, so you're going to need some AI capabilities. But then, which AI services are you going to use? Are you going to use those from OpenAI or Azure's version of OpenAI? Maybe there are other um, open source models that you'll want to use. Um, like those from Hugging Face um, or some custom models um, that you like to use. You may want to build apps that talk to certain models in certain situations, right? Like your enterprise customers get Azure OpenAI and your free or community to your customers get Hugging Face models. Be great to have uh, that kind of flexibility for your generative AI app. All right, there's going to be some utilities that your AI app is going to use, like making HTTP requests or doing some complex math or even some simple stuff like accessing the user's local date and time. Your AI app will probably need to connect to databases to retrieve content or to do a semantic search over vectorized content. Uh, think about databases like Azure AI Search or Redis or a vector database like Qdrint. There's probably more advanced functionality you want your generative AI app to do, like load PDFs or Word docs or search the web using Google or Bing. Um, if your customers are using M365, you may want your generative AI app to access the Microsoft Graph. Um, or to get insights from um, the customer's enterprise data. So uh, wouldn't it be great if you had a plugin framework for this type of extensibility that your AI app could leverage? Um, finally, you're gonna learn that customers are gonna use this app in a way uh, that you never anticipated and you won't have time or resources to manually implement. So you're gonna want your AI app to actually be intelligent and figure out what the user is trying to do and that's where a planner comes in to analyze what the user is asking for and um, route the request to the right set of utilities and plugins and connectors to make it all happen and give them what they're looking for. Uh, you could build a framework to deliver these capabilities yourself, but there are a lot of components here and wouldn't you want to adopt an SDK that has been well tested is open source uh, with a ton of community support and is backed by the largest software company in the world, who also happens to be Microsoft, your favorite technology partner. <laughs> well, that's where Semantic Kernel comes in. And you can see how Semantic Kernel provides solutions for all the AI components in your generative AI app starting with the AI capabilities, right? With Semantic Kernel, you can generate text and images and also build chat experiences. Semantic Kernel supports various AI services like OpenAI and Azure OpenAI. It works with Hugging Face and custom models as well. It comes preloaded with several utilities. 
making it easy for the generative AI to call HTTP, access the local file system, as well as do uh, math and daytime functions. Semantic kernel also comes preloaded with support for many different kinds of databases like um, Azure AI search, uh, Postgres, Qdrint. So adding data to your generative AI app becomes easy. Semantic kernel is extensible and there are many plugins out there. Uh, you see some examples here um, like Microsoft Graph and document loading and web searching, and you can build your own plugins, obviously. Semantic Kernel comes with several kinds of planners that your app can take advantage of so that it can um, see what utilities, connections, and plugins the kernel has available to it, and then it comes up with a plan to respond to a user's complicated request. And we'll see that in just a minute in the demo. All right, so uh, Semantic Kernel is an SDK. Uh, it comes in C Sharp, Python, and Java flavors. Now, you may be asking yourself, what about Langchain? Um, and to me, the difference is that Langchain was really built for a data scientist to chain different data pipelines together. Semantic Kernel was built from the ground up for app developers. Um, and also, as a Microsoft partner, you may be familiar with .NET and Microsoft Graph and Azure AI, and you'll find first-class support for the entire Microsoft ecosystem inside of the Semantic Kernel. All right, let's look at a demo. So let me bring up Visual Studio code here. Now, this is a great demo project built by Moaid Hathout, who is a software engineer at Microsoft. He's not on the Semantic Kernel team, but he's a Semantic Kernel enthusiast uh, and a great engineer. So the program.cs class sets up our configuration. You can see I'm providing the names uh, for my model deployments, uh, the keys and the endpoints. And when I run the demo, I'm going to pass in uh, the name of a particular demo class. You can see all these demo classes here. Um, I pass the name of the demo class, um, and that's what will get, will get loaded, right? So if we look at this utils file, you'll see that the name of the class gets uh, passed in, and through reflection, um, it's going to be loaded, okay? And all of these demo classes are based on base demo. Um, uh, and um, like I said, all, all of these models uh, implement this base demo um, and has specific functionality that uh, we want to see. So I'm only going to show one of these, the planner 00 basic 001 right here. Uh, and what this is going to do, it's going to load documents from our memories folder. There's just one document in there right now, this sample corporate bylaws PDF. It's going to load it into an in-memory vector database, and they're going to be able to ask it questions. We'll also, um, it's going to, th this particular demo is going to show us the plan that gets generated so that it knows how to respond to our questions. So in this case, it's just going to have um, the in-memory uh, document loader plugin available to it. So it's going to be a very simple plan, but I think you'll get the idea. And this is a sample corporate bylaws, right? When you start a company, you're going to create bylaws about the uh, officers and directors of the company and notes and stock and all that stuff. Uh, so we're going to be able to ask it some questions. All right, let's run the demo. So I'm, I'm calling .NET run. You just need .NET, .NET 8 for this to work. But .NET Run, I'm planning. I'm passing in the name of the class, and through a reflection, uh, the class gets loaded. And now it's asking me, what do I want to know? And and for this, I'm just going to ask it to summarize all the required officer roles uh, and only share their main duties. So let me pass that in. So here we see directors. If you look at the document. Where are the officers? Here are the officers. So you see there's uh, um, chairman and uh, president and secretary 
chief financial officer. So here you see it's created a plan. Um, it's going to use a dynamic memory loader plugin. Um, it's figured that that's where it might be able to answer this question. And then it's going to output document, which should contain the summary of required officer's roles and their main duties. So let's see what it returns. And there we are. There are the officers and the bullets of their main duties. Awesome, let's return to our presentation. And um, let's uh, wrap this up by telling you where you can learn more. So go to this aka.mssk links and you'll find all of the links below. And I will quickly kind of go through all those with you. So the first link is a link to a, a long, a much longer demo of uh, from Moaid on his um, semantic kernel demo project that I've been uh, that I just demoed for you. So he'll go through all the different uh, demo classes. You can kind of see all the functionality. He does a really great job. Uh, here you can find his. Um, his uh, his repo um, for this demo, and then you can hear. Oops, trying to. <laughs> Here are the supported languages uh, for Semantic Kernel and all the different features that are ready for those languages. So depending on what you're going to be using for your application, you may want to check this to make sure that the specific feature you're looking for is available. This is a great blog post that gives you ways to stay engaged with Semantic Kernel team, including invitations to community office hours. Here is a uh, semantic kernel discussion um, area on GitHub. And then here is the semantic kernel blog, which gets updated pretty regularly. So that's it from me from semantic kernel. I hope you uh, learned a lot and I'm really excited to see what you build. Thanks.